Yes, hello once again and thanks for joining me here on Classic Dirt Bike TV as we uh, take in part three of the racing highlights from the 2022 Scottish Grand National Scramble that was held at the world famous Drumlandrig uh, Castle. So this is the continuation of the Saturday's uh, race programme and after these races we'll go straight into the beginning of the races for the Sunday. So this is race 21, the pre-1984s over at 60s class. Now even although these are the over 60s, there's some very quick riders in this class as they leave the line. Looks like another cracking start there by number 32, that's Trevor Calderwood from Northern Ireland, Paul Chiappa has also made a good start there in second place. So as they come up to turn two, it's Trevor Calderwood, number 32, on the 500 Monda, who is your race leader. Second place is number 808, that's Mark Gleedhill in second position as the rest of the pack make their way up the hill to begin lap one. So this is the uh, first of the remaining four races of the Saturday's uh, programme and we'll go straight into the racing uh, for Sunday uh, soon after we've concluded uh, these four races. But it's number 32, Trevor Calderwood from Northern Ireland, who is your race leader. Second is still Mark Gleedhill. Pete Mathia is in third place and it looks like Paul Chiappa is currently in fourth, but this is another storming start from the Northern Irishman, uh, Trevor Calderwood, that uh, lovely Monda machine, the Michael 81 Michael frame with the big 500 two-stroke uh, Honda motor in the chassis. So as Trevor comes round to complete lap one, uh, second place is still Mark Bleedhill, Pete Mathia is third, fourth is Paul Chiappa, fifth is John Stokes just making his way through. Number five going through there is Martin Snape. Uh, Stuart Roden has just went past there on the big four-stroke uh, CCM bike. Number one, five, six is uh, Graham Chalice on the KTM. But it's uh, still Trevor Calderwood, number 32. And Trevor has made uh, some storming starts from the gate in this over 60s class. And he looks like he's done it once again in this uh, particular race. So he's looking good at the front of uh, this class. Second is still Mark Gleedhill on the 490 Michael with uh, Pete Mathia currently in third position. So this is the battle for second and third positions between uh, number 808, Mark Gleedhill on the Michael and Pete Mathia there in the uh, white. I think Pete's riding uh, a Bill Brown uh, 490 uh, machine. So it's still Trevor Calderwood, your race leader, as Pete Mathia uh, crosses the line to start another uh, racing lap. Number 74 just uh, going through. There's John Wood on his 500 Suzuki. But uh, on lap three, it looks like Trevor Calderwood is still hanging on to that uh, pole position. But uh, second place now is the Cheshire Charger himself, Pete Mathia, on the 490 uh, Bill Brown Michael. So it looks like Trevor could be getting a bit nervous at the front there with uh, Pete Mathia breathing down his neck so hopefully Trevor will manage to hold on but uh, Pete Mathia's already moved closer to uh, Trevor Calderwood but this is still a good ride here by uh, Trevor. Uh, number one there Pete Mathia, an absolute uh, legend in motocross uh, terms. An ex, I think Pete was an ex uh, works rider uh, way back in the day. As you can see, he's certainly not lost any of the skill and speed that uh, he used uh, when he was a younger man. Number 20 there is Stuart 
rode in on the big CCM. I think uh, Stuart Stewart being chased there by number 139. I think that's Craig Holmes, uh, also on one of these 490 German Michaels. So it's still the man from Newton Ards in Northern Ireland, Trevor Calderwood, number 32 on the Monda, who is your, your race leader. Pete Matthew very close behind now. I think Pete's just uh, keeping a watching brief to see if Trevor makes any kind of slip-ups into the corners and uh, people uh, make his move. And of course we have plenty more uh, video footage to come from this Drumlandrig 2022 event because we have uh, at least 20 races from the Sunday's race programme to feature so make sure you subscribe in order that you don't miss out on any of the action from uh, Sunday. But it looks like Pete Mathia is your uh, new race leader. Trevor Calderwood is now in second position. As we take a look at number two, Paul Chiappa being chased by number 157 there. That's John uh, Stokes. Martin Snape there, number five. But this certainly looks like a carbon copy of the previous over 60s race where uh, Trevor Calderwood made an excellent start and led uh, most of the race but uh, Pete Mathia has done it again he's just uh, bided his time and took the lead of this race and you can see that Pete's already beginning to stretch the legs of that big 490 Michael so it's Pete Mathia number one your current uh, race leader in this over 60s uh, class race so as Pete Mathia comes up the hill for the very Last time it's going to be another win for this very talented veteran racer. Second is going to be uh, Trevor Calderwood coming across the line. And it looks like it's going to be Mark Gleedhill who's going to take that third place position. So that brings us to race number 22 of the Saturday's race programme, the pre-1984s uh, over 50s and 60s class, another good lineup of riders as they leave the line. Oh, looks like we've got a faller there, that looks like number 14, I think that's Kevin Smith from uh, Horwich on his big Honda at 480, it's taken a tumble there, but it's number 51, uh, Neil Herdley once again, who is your race leader as the rest of the pack make their way up the hill. So we're just picking up our race leaders again. It looks like it's still number 51. Uh, Neil Erdley on the Yamaha 465. So it's still uh, Neil Erdley on the Yamaha, your race leader. Second is number 98. That's uh, Mick Alderson from uh, Bury on his Honda 250. I can see Sean Muir in that front running pack. Sean, uh, number 21 there, was one of the riders that we couldn't identify in a previous uh, video, but Sean contacted me to put that right, so it uh, looks like Sean is going to get a mention in this uh, part three video. 79 just making his way through there is uh, David Mason but uh, Neil Erdley has certainly been one of the front runners in this over 50s and 60s class he's already won uh, a race or possibly even two races on the Saturday so he's still doing well in this uh, current moto number 98 again just making his way through Mick Alderson it looks like Sean Muir has moved up into third position. We'll just try and pick out one or two of the uh, riders making their way through there. Number 232 two, just making his way past is Martin Small from Brentwood on his 490 Michael. But uh, at the front of the pack it's still this man here, number 51, uh, Neil 
Erdley on the 465 Yamaha from 1980. Very quick bikes and as you know, these were one of the best bikes that Yamaha ever made during the 1980s in my personal opinion of course. Uh, 98 is Mick Alderson in second place, number 21 is Sean Muir, number 96 there is Robbie Allen from Scotland. Just coming towards us there, number 155 is uh, Don Durkin from Horsham on his uh, Husky Yamaha 500. And number 11 just uh, going through is again another rider that's not listed in the race uh, programme. So it's still uh, Neil Erdley who is out there on his own. Uh, doesn't seem to be anybody close enough yet to make a challenge on uh, Neil's lead, but he's certainly in command of this uh, over 50s and 60s race here on Saturday. Number 21 again is uh, Sean Muir on the uh, Honda. I think that's a little uh, 250 red rocket or possibly even a 480 that uh, Sean's riding. And once again for the Saturday, we've certainly been blessed with uh, superb uh, weather at this year's Drumlandrig event. It uh, was a bit miserable and wet on the Friday morning, but it's certainly uh, brightened up now since then, and you can ask uh, for better weather to hold uh, one of these vintage uh, scrambles events. So we're taking a look at uh, Sean Muir, who is currently in uh, second position, and the race uh, leader, Neil Erdley, on the uh, 465 Yamaha has already crossed the finish line to take the win and it's going to be Sean Muir who takes that second place uh, position. So that's the highlights of the over 50s and 60s race which uh, brings us quite nicely to race 23, the pre-1984 over 50s. And just on the left there on the white uh, 490 Yamaha is uh, David Loudon, another very talented uh, rider. So it looks like the boys are good to go. Waiting on the gate uh, dropping. So as they leave the line and dive into turn one, it looks like another good start by the man from uh, Cockermouth, number 48, Mark Fulton, who is being chased by uh, Willie Burgess from Northern Ireland in second position. So the rider's just about to begin at lap one of this race. This of course will be the penultimate race of the Saturday's race programme. So as the riders begin lap one, it is indeed number 48, Mark Fulton, your race leader. Second is Willie Burgess, number three on the 490 at Michael and I think that could be uh, Terry House who's in third position but another good start here by uh, number 48 Mark Fulton. Willie Burgess also had quite a good afternoon here on the Saturday. He's been running at the front of this pack in every single race. But, uh, another good scrap developing between these very uh, talented uh, riders. As you can see and hear, this is a very quick part of the track. So we're looking to the far side of the track again to see if Mark Fulton is still the race leader and he certainly is. Willie Burgess looks like he's a bit closer than he's been but uh, Mark is uh, still in command of this uh, over 50s race. Willie Burgess is still second. It looks like Terry House has now moved up into third position but Mark's uh, certainly storming around this from Landwig Castle racetrack and it looks like Terry House is beginning 
to make a move on Irishman Willie Burgess. So Terry House it goes round the outside. And that was some move that going round the outside of Willie Burgess and making it stick. So it's Terry House who is now your second placed rider. And in actual fact, it looks like uh, Terry House is uh, currently your new race leader. It looks like Terry's managed to pass uh, Mark Fulton, possibly on that wooded section of the track. So it's Terry House, your new race leader. Mark Fulton is in second with uh, Willie Burgess in third on that uh, very quick uh, Mago Michael. Number 25 there, that's Craig Smith from my hometown of Dunfermline. Craig again is riding one of those German micro machines. And number 310 just making his way through, that's Damien Carter riding one of the many KX Kawasaki's that he's brought along to from Landrig. But here's your race leader, uh, Terry House, number 66, on the butler, uh, Michael. 490 and you can see exactly why these bikes are uh, loved so much by twin shop racers they're just so maneuverable and powerful with that big two-stroke 490 uh, michael motor and number treble six there is uh, massimo signornin from uh, italy on his 490 michael so it just shows you the international appeal of this Drumlandrig event. We've uh, got a rider from Italy taking part, so that's Massimo there, number treble six. But it's still Terry House, number 66, who is your current race leader in this over 50s race. And Terry looking uh, very comfortable out there on his uh, particular 490 Michael machine. And Terry's riding that Butler Michael so fast, even the camera can't focus quick enough to keep up with him. But it's another tracking ride here by Terry House, number 66. And as far as I know, it's still Mark Fulton there in second position, number 48. Willie Burgess is currently in third. So as our race leader begins his last and final lap, it's still number 66. Terry House, your race leader from Mark Fulton in second position. Terry just coming down to lap some of the slower riders on the track. So this has been another cracking ride here by Terry House as he comes up the hill for the last and final time. It looks like Terry's gonna not chop another win on the Saturday's race program. We are just watching for Mark Fulton coming through in second position. Here he is, Mark uh, crossing the line on his uh, Honda Hybrid and it's going to be uh, Willie Burgess here, number three, who's going to take a third place position. So that brings us quite nicely to the final race of the Saturday's race program, the pre-1984 under 50s class, basically the young pups of uh, twin shock racing. Another good lineup here of twin shock bikes. So as they leave the line, it looks like a good start there. Oh, dearie me! And that looked like at uh, number nine, Paul uh, Jonty Johnson, who's just taking a fall there. I think when he came up to the turn, he got squeezed into that corner and had nowhere to go. And oh, that looks quite nasty. It looks like uh, Paul's up on his feet once again. And it looks like it's number 711 Graham Wiley who's taken command of the lead of this race. Uh, it's uh, Brad O'Leary is in second position. And there's uh, Paul uh, Jonty Johnson there just trying to get his bike sorted out, but it sounds like the throttle's jammed open on that big Honda. Coming to the rescue there is a race starter, Darren Hudson. 
but it looks like that's the end of uh, Paul's race uh, for today. So here's your race leader, number 711. That's uh, Graham Wiley on his uh, 490 Michael. So he's made a very good start from the front here, uh, Graham Wiley. So as our race leader comes round to complete lap one, it's Graham Wiley, number 7. 11 second is at number 2, Brad O'Leary. Number 98 is in third position, that's Richard Mason on the 500 Honda. Number 82 just make, making his way through there, that's uh, David Houston on uh, Tony Kiggs, uh, old uh, Scottish Championship winning uh, Honda machine. So we'll get back to our race leader again. It's still Graham Wiley, number 7, 11. Second place is Brad O'Leary, number 2 on the white, at 490 Michael. Brad's already done very well here today on the Saturday and looks like he's certainly on a charge to try and do something about Graham Wiley's lead in this under 50s race. So there's your race leader coming through, 711, Graham Wiley, Brad O'Leary in second position. Uh, Brad also did very well uh, on in the grass track racing on the Friday night, so he certainly likes his racing, does uh, our uh, Brad. So as Brad comes to cross the line in second position, it's number 98, Richard Mason who is in third position. So we take a look at uh, wider number 511, which is another one of these uh, entries that's not uh, listed in the race programme. So another rider that uh, I'm unable to identify, but it looks like he's riding a big 500 Honda. So as it stands in, in this last and final race of the Saturday's race programme, it's number 711, Graham Wiley on the 490 Michael. And as you can see, it doesn't take too long for these top class riders to complete a lap of this Drumlandrig Castle racetrack. There's your second place man, number 98, Richard Mason. It looks like number 43 is in third position. That's Ryan Ireland from Kendall on the Honda 500. Number 77 there, that's Roy Wells. He had a look at Roy's bikes, of course, in the paddock in the previous video from this event. But it's still Graham Wiley who's in total command of this uh, under 50s race and he comes round to complete yet another racing lap and see just how quick these old uh, 81 490 Michaels are number 43 there that's uh, Ryan Ireland uh, once again number 900 just going up the hill is uh, Joe Mee from Ashburn riding his Honda at 250. Number 169 is another Irishman. That's uh, Sean Beatty from County Armagh on another 490 Michael. But here's your uh, second placed rider. I think it's at number 98 still, uh, Richard Mason. And there's your leader. 7-11, Graham at Wiley. 82 is at David Houston. Um, that particular bike used to belong to Scottish uh, racing legend uh, Tony Keig. David gets to ride Tony's bike uh, now and again at these big uh, prestigious uh, Twin Shock race events. So we're back with our race leader as he uh, starts his last and final lap of this uh, final race of the Saturday's race programme. So it's going to be another very well-deserved win for number 
711. Graham Wiley. So it's been another good ride here by Graham as he comes round to take the chequered flag. I think it's going to be at number 98. Richard Mason is going to cross the line in second position. And so that basically concludes all of the racing from the Saturday's race programme. We now move in to the very first race of the Sunday's uh, race event. This of course is the uh, pre-1968 class, or basically the uh, vintage class of this uh, Drumlandrig event. And as you can see, another very good lineup of these old uh, classic bikes, so as the bikes get ready to leave the line. Looks like a good start there by uh, Harry Stitt on that number uh, 111 uh, Jap machine. James Thompson in second place, looks like John Griffiths is in third, so it's uh, Japs in places 1, 2 and 3 is ahead into turn 1, but it's James Thompson, number 26, your race leader. Second is Harry Stitt. Third is John Griffiths. Fourth is Liston Bell. Fifth is Peter Hollinshead on that lovely BNC. So as the riders begin lap one, it's still uh, number 26, James Thompson on the Rickman uh, Jap machine. As we've said before, another one of the many Rickman Japs that uh, Cecil Pearson has uh, brought over from uh, Northern Ireland and uh, as you can see because although these bikes do look uh, quite antiquated they are uh, very quick on the racetrack as we take a look at uh, number 33 there that's uh, John Griffiths from Northern Ireland another uh, of the very talented uh, riders from across the pond Liston Bell is in fourth position in this race. I think Liston's riding his big uh, Jawa four-stroke machine. Number 14 just coming through there, that's Scott Gordon riding that lovely uh, Rickman BSA. Number 15 is uh, Matty Taylor. But it's still James Thompson, number 26, your race leader. I think uh, James has already uh, won uh, two races on the Saturday. Uh, he did have a fall in uh, the first race into turn one, but still managed to get up to about uh, third or fourth position in that race. But uh, since then, James has certainly made up for that uh, little hiccup at the start uh, of race one. So as he comes round to complete another lap. James Thompson at number 26 there. Second place should be at Harry Stitt. Number 111. John Griffiths is still in third place. Liston Bell is still in fourth. As we take a look at number at 644 there, that's uh, Jimmy Murray from Glen Rothes in my home county of Fife. Jimmy's riding a 380 CZ machine. And as I said, you can see all of the races from this Sunday's race programme coming up here on Classic Dirt Bike TV. Probably another uh, two videos after uh, this part uh, three uh, video, but uh, we will feature uh, all of the racing from the Sunday in forthcoming uh, videos but it's James Thompson still your race leader number 26 Harry Stitt is still in there in second number 111 uh, that number 11 bike there is uh, Adrian Lappin that's also another Harry Stitt designed machine number 454 is Peter Holland's head looks like another one of the Irish riders just made his way through there Number 20 is Lee Rook, also from Northern Ireland. There certainly seems to be no stopping uh, this man here. Number 26, James uh, Thompson. 
and uh, I'm looking forward to heading back to Northern Ireland in a couple of weeks time to uh, film these guys in action on their home turf at their uh, charity scramble so looking forward to going back to the Emerald Isle in a couple of weeks but it's James Thompson your race leader as he crosses the line to begin another lap we are taking a look at number 454 there that's Peter Holland's head on his lovely BSA Peter normally rides his uh, SRM BSA twin but looks like Peter's giving one of his other BSAs a bit of a run out this afternoon So this has been another uh, quite uh, easy run to the chequered flag for James Thompson as he comes up to uh, take the win. It's going to be Harry Stitt who's going to cross the line in second position and we are taking a look at uh, number 33, John Griffiths, who's going to cross the line in third. So that's Cecil Pearson Jarps in positions 1, 2 and 3. So we now move on to the second race of Saturday's race programme. These are the pre-1975 Unlimited class and it's a good start by Chris Winder on that 250 Honda Elsinore from 1973. As they head up the hill and to begin lap one, it looks like it is still Chris Winder, your race leader. And it also looks like Kevin Murray has made quite a good start there, number treble two, as the riders begin lap one. So here's your race leader, number 13, Chris Winder on the 250 Honda Elsinore, and it is indeed at number treble two, Kevin Murray, who is in second position. I think Kevin's riding uh, Archie Baird's uh, Nori Patty 3L CZ machine. So a couple of very quick riders here at the forefront of this uh, pre-75 Unlimited race. So as they come round to complete lap one, it's number 13, Chris Winder, who leads number treble two there. That's Kevin Murray on that uh, Archie Baird uh, Nori Patty 3L development at CZ. In actual fact, the frame on that uh, number treble two bike is another one of those fantastic chassis that was built uh, by Harry Stitt. So as the riders head into the wooded section of the course, it's still uh, Chris Winder who is your race uh, leader. Kevin Murray looks like he's very close behind now. It looks like Kevin's going to have a go for the lead of this race as they head into the centre off the track once again but another cracking start here by uh, Chris Winder on the 250 Elsinore. Kevin Murray looks like he's going to have a go down the inside here. Chris Winder still managing to keep his uh, Honda in front of the CZ but Kevin tries to go around the outside and slams the door so it's Kevin Murray your new uh, race leader. So as the riders emerge from the far side of the track, it's still number treble two, Kevin Murray, who leads Chris Winder. So it's the CZ versus the uh, 250 Honda Elsinore. But this has been a good start here by Kevin Murray on the CZ machine. Chris Winder is still in second place as they come round to uh, complete another lap. So as it stands, it's still uh, Kevin Murray, your race leader. Chris Winder is still uh, keeping a watching brief there in second uh, position. It looks like uh, Kevin Murray looks uh, very comfortable at the front there, but uh, Chris is still uh, keeping in touch with that uh, CZ machine. But uh, this is still another good ride here by Chris Winder on the 250 Honda Elsinore. Chris certainly loves his uh, Elsinore machines and I've seen Chris racing many times at these kind of events and he's always uh, out there at the front of the pack but uh, he's got his work cut out here trying to catch uh, Kevin Murray on that CZ 
we take a look at number 78 just going through. That's Paul uh, Nichols from uh, Trowbridge. He's also riding uh, one of those uh, Czechoslovakian 380CZ uh, or CZ machines if you're watching this in the United States. So once more we're back with our race leader, number travel 2, Kevin Murray, who is being hassled by uh, Chris Swinder on the Elsinore. And actually if you take a very close look at that number treble 2 bike of Kevin Murray's, you can see that Kevin no longer has a seat on his machine as it uh, seemed to have fallen off on that previous lap. But uh, Chris Swinder now uh, closing in, but uh, it looks like Kevin's going to have to keep his feet uh, on the pegs and standing up for the remainder of this race but uh, Chris Winder now takes his chance and uh, takes a lead of this race but this is still a very good ride here by Kevin Murray despite not having a seat on his machine so we're just picking up a few of the other riders on their way past number 511 there that's Alan uh, Waring from uh, Reading also riding a CZ machine but uh, as they head towards the checkered flag for their very last lap it's uh, Chris Winder who is your race leader Kevin uh, Murray's uh, legs must be getting a bit tired <laughs> yeah, a bit tired but you can see that Kevin's even taken the time to sit on the actual chassis of the bike just to give his aching legs a bit of a rest but this is going to be a good win here for at number 13 Chris Winder and who knows things may have been different had uh, Kevin not lost a seat of his uh, machine but as he comes to take the checkered flag it's a good win here by uh, number 13 uh, Chris Winder so that now brings us on to race three these are the pre-1978 unlimited class bikes Another good lineup of bikes, and as I said, we had 40 start gates here at this Drumlandrig event, and quite uh, a few of them were certainly full to capacity during uh, some of the races. So, a good turnout of bikes for this uh, Drumlandrig 2022 event. So, the riders are good to go as they leave the line. We'll try and pick up who gets the hole. So, it looks like it's number 24. Again, that's uh, Sam Sibbald on the TT500 Yamaha. And as the riders head up the hill to begin lap one, looks like Sam Sibbald has been overtaken. Number seven there in the forefront of that picture, that's uh, Tony Barrow, who's riding his uh, late father's works CCM. It looks like Tony's got some kind of problem. Looks like the bike has uh, stalled and won't start again, but nice to see Tony uh, riding his uh, late father's works uh, CCM bike. So we're picking up our race leader again, which again is, of course is the uh, unnamed rider that we uh, couldn't uh, remember in the previous uh, video on the YZ uh, Yamaha because uh, his name and number were not uh, registered in the race program, but he's certainly off to a flying start here again. Second place is Sam Sibbald, I think that's number 198 in third place, that's John Erdley on the 250 Husk Varna machine. And as you can see the track conditions here at Etram Landrig Castle are still absolutely superb. So we're back with our race leader which is uh, the mystery YZ Yamaha rider. Uh, he has number 46 stamped on the side of his bike but he has a completely different number on the front and uh, I think he has a, a, another number on the rear of his shirt but uh, I do apologise for not being able to name this uh, very talented uh, rider because he isn't of course listed in the race programme. But it's still number 198 uh, John Erdley who is in uh, second uh, position I think number 42 is John Cowgill on the Suzuki uh, 400 who is in third 
although it's uh, still a bit hard to comprehend that we're holding this scramble event inside the grounds of one of Scotland's most historic castles because it's not every day that you get uh, to rip up this immaculately prepared grass and in its way it's a bit like being allowed to dig up uh, the fairway of your local uh, golf course so we're all uh, very lucky in uh, that respect. So we are currently looking at our uh, second placed position rider, number 198, that's uh, John Erdley on his uh, 250 Husqvarna and I think it's still uh, number 42 Jonathan Cowgill who is in third on his uh, 400 Suzuki, you can just see John making his way through there so this has been another good ride here uh, by John on the Suzuki. So once again this has been another good scrap between uh, John Erdley and uh, Jonathan Cowgill for that second and third place uh, position. But uh, here's your race uh, leader, our uh, unidentified Yamaha rider. And uh, that's another reason why it's good to get your entry in for these kind of events very quickly and that way that you get your uh, rider number and name uh, put in the uh, pre-race uh, programme. So it looks like uh, number 42, Jonathan Cowgill, is now taking that second place position from John Erdley, number 198, on the 250 Husk Varna. I think that's a 1975 machine that John's uh, riding, but uh, John currently now in third position. And you can see another uh, good collection of spectators watching uh, the racing here on the Sunday. I think just about every part of the paddock was either uh, filled with uh, bike campers or just uh, spectators. So it was a massive turnout of uh, spectators for this 2002 Drum Landig uh, race event. So it's our Yamaha rider here who is still in the lead of uh, this race. So we are picking up uh, the battle for second and third position as these riders make their way around on their last and final lap of this pre-1978 Unlimited class race. It's still Jonathan Cowgill who is your uh, second placed rider with number 198 uh, John Erdley on the Husqvarna in third position but just a few turns to go and uh, it looks like Jonathan Cowgill is in quite a good position but John Erdley is going to try and put his Husqvarna down the inside and as they go up the hill it's an uh, advantage to uh, John Erdley as they come down the hill but who's going to cross the line at the chequered flag as they go up the hill it looks like it's Jonathan Cowgill who's going to take that second place position. Okay next up we are back to the pre-1984 Clubman Class. This is race four, of course, from the Sunday's race programme. And as you can see, an almost uh, completely full gate of riders here at Drumlandrig. And look out for number 18 on the left there, uh, Jim Colligan, who's already had about three second place finishes in this class. So as the riders leave the line, as you can see, another good group of riders. Looks like Jim Colligan's made a very good start there into uh, turn one but it's uh, number 17 on the Michael I think that's uh, taken the early lead as the riders go up the hill. This number 17 rider of course is another of uh, the riders not listed in the racing program. So as we pick up our race leader it is indeed number 17 on the blue at 490. Michael is your race leader. Second is Jim Colligan, number 18. And uh, I think in third place there is uh, John uh, Newsom, who is uh, registered in the race programme as riding a 490 Michael, but it's certainly not a Michael that uh, John's riding in this uh, race. It looks like a Honda uh, Red Rocket. 
So we're back once again with our uh, race leaders. It's still number 17, the uh, unidentified uh, rider again. So if uh, you are this particular rider, then I do apologise for not being able to uh, name you with regards identification. But we're looking at the second place man, Jim Colligan, uh, number 18 from uh, Mukti in Fife. Uh, Jim's done uh, very well thus far over the weekend. But this is another good ride by that number 17 rider. Jim Colligan still in second position. That looks like John Newsom, number 21 there, in third. Let's try and pick up a few of the other riders as they make their way up the hill. Number 50 just going through there is Andy Barnes from Annan. Number 88 is Billy Pentland. And number 95 there is Wesley Stockdale from Northern Ireland. But I have to say that the uh, infrastructure and the organisation that's gone into putting together this year's Drumlandrig event has been uh, absolutely first class and the Galloway Motorcycle Club certainly deserve a huge pat on the back for the amount of effort and hard work that they've put in to make sure that this event uh, went ahead. And with the feedback that I've been receiving with regards to the overall layout of the weekend, it seems that everybody's in agreement that this 20. 22 Grand National Scramble has certainly been a huge uh, success. So we're looking at a race at leader number 17 on the uh, 490 German made uh, Michael machine as he comes round to complete another racing lap. Jim Colligan is still in second position, number 18. I think it's John Newsom who's still uh, sitting there in third on that uh, Honda Red Rocket. As we take a look at number 106 there in the white, that's uh, Marcus Kears on his Italian-made uh, Moto uh, Vila machine. And it looks like our number 17 race leader has got a comfortable uh, lead in this uh, clubman class race here on the Sunday. Second there is number 18 still, uh, Jim Colligan. Another good ride here by Jim as we uh, take a look at number 21, that's uh, John Newsom. As I said, it's uh, John's bike's listed as a 490 Michael, but you can plainly see that that is a Honda Red Rocket. Number treble two there is Callum Sangster. And number 511 there just going past is another of the riders uh, not identified in the race. Uh, program, but as you can see, he's doing very well on that uh, 490 Michael machine. So, as our race uh, leader heads towards the checkered flag on his last and final lap, this is going to be another good win here by uh, number 17. It looks like Jim Colligan is going to chalk up another second place finished. I think that's about three second places that Jim's had over the course of the weekend. So another good ride here by the Fife man on his at four at 90 Michael. So another well done to uh, Jim Colligan. So that quite nicely brings us on to the pre-1984 over 60s class, the veterans of uh, Twin Shop Racing and uh, look out for the likes of Pete Mathia in this race and of course Trevor Calderwood who's been doing a lot of the early running in this class over the weekend so as they leave the line looks like Trevor Calderwood has made another fantastic start it's uh, Pete Mathia by the looks of it in second position but we have a new race leader already as they make their way up the hill And as you can see, another uh, big class of riders in this over 60s class race. There must be at least uh, 30 plus riders in this uh, group. So on uh, lap one, as they make their way past the grandstand at the far side of the track, it looks like it's number 32, Trevor Calderwood from Northern Ireland, from uh, Newton Ards in Northern Ireland, who is your race 
leader. So this has been another cracking start by this very talented uh, Irishman. Second place looks like it's uh, multiple Scottish twin shock champion Paul Kiapa there, number two on the 490 Michael. Pete Mathia is in third position and I think Pete's already won uh, two or possibly even three races in this class over the course of the weekend. So Pete Mathia in fine form in this over 60s. Uh, class number 808 just making his way through there is Mark uh, Gleedhill who did very well in the previous uh, over 60s uh, class race. Number 20 there is Stuart Roden on the big CCM. So as we begin another lap it still is Trevor Calderwood with a decent lead just after two laps. So Trevor going very well on that big uh, Monda machine, the 81 490 frame with the big 500cc two-stroke Honda motor in the chassis. So uh, Trevor Calderwood doing very well in that first place uh, position. Second place now, it looks like it's uh, Pete Mathia who's taken that second place. Paul Chiappa is now in third with Mark Gleetail there, number 808, uh, also riding the Michael. Looks like Mark's getting ready to make a, a move on Paul Chiappa with the green background on his numbers, which of course are supposed to be uh, yellow with uh, black numbers, but uh, this bike is certainly a 490 and not uh, a 250 as those uh, green background uh, suggests. Number uh, five just making his way through there. That was Martin Snape. Now it looks like we have a brand new leader at the front. It's that uh, man again, the Cheshire Charger, Pete Mathia, who has taken the lead from uh, Trevor Calderwood, number 32. And it looks like uh, Paul Chiappa and uh, Mark Gleedhill are still having that scrap there for the third and fourth place uh, positions. But there's certainly not much you can uh, say about this man other than he's uh, won just about every title that uh, you can imagine in motocross terms and uh, Pete Mathia is certainly one of the racing legends uh, from the sport and uh, Pete has just about done it all and uh, bought the many t-shirts that go with the title so it's Pete Mathia your race uh, leader second is Trevor Calderwood number 32 it's Mark Gleedhill now who's taken that third place away from Paul Chiappa that's Martin Snape just making his way through with number 51 Martin Stokes close uh, behind number 74 is John Wood But I've certainly watched uh, this man racing uh, for many years now, Pete Mathia, and uh, he's one of the most natural uh, riders you could ever find on a motocross bike. He just looks so uh, comfortable and smooth when he's riding uh, these twin shock uh, Michaels. So uh, another good start here for the Cheshire Charger, the absolute legend uh, that is uh, Pete Mathia. So we're looking to see who's going to come through in second position. It's still uh, Trevor Calderwood. Mark Gleedhill is in third. Paul Chiappa there is in uh, fourth position. Uh, Paul, of course, still riding very well, even though he's uh, about 63 years old now. And I used to watch Paul many years ago at the schoolboy scrambling races when he used to race his old uh, BSA Bantams. 20 there is Stuart Roden again on that uh, Alan Clues CCM bike. Another very quick uh, rider, Stuart, who uh, was associated uh, with Formula One uh, many years ago. So Stuart uses his time now to ride these old uh, CCM machines. So here is your race leader coming round to take the chequered flag, Pete Mathia going to notch up another win and as we look at the battle for second and third positions between number 32 Trevor Calderwood and Mark at Gleed Hill so as they come up the hill it looks like it's going to be Trevor Calderwood who's going to finish 
in second position with Mark Gleethill on the Maiko in third. So once again that brings us quite nicely round to uh, race 6, the pre-1984s over 50s and 60s and this will be the last race in this part 3 uh, video but of course there will still be another two parts to come from the Sunday's race program so make sure that you uh, tune in to have a look at those so as the riders leave the line go into uh, turn one looks like everybody's made their way round safely so as they make their way round the top of the hill it looks like it's number 516 who is our early leader that's Paul White who is actually list listed in the programme as riding a Suzuki but of course Paul may have more than one machine to race uh, at this event this weekend. So as we go back with our race leader, it's still number 516, Paul White from uh, Leatherhead. And I'm not exactly sure what bike that is that Paul's riding, it certainly doesn't look uh, like a Suzuki. But he's doing very well in this uh, race. Second place position man there is number 96, that's Robbie Allen. Number 21 is Sean Muir, who we uh, couldn't identify in a previous video. So thanks very much, Sean, for getting in touch and uh, putting a name to uh, that particular rider. Number 19, just making his way through, is Mark uh, Tilsey from Ashley on his 490. Yamaha but it looks like Robbie Allen now number 96 has taken the lead of this over 50s and 60s class race. Robbie of course is one of the great uh, Allen family from Scotland who are all uh, racers. Uh, the uh, legendary Vic Allen and we also had Robbie Allen Sr who we lost in 2014 but the Allen family are well associated with motorcycle racing in uh, Scotland. Still, still Sean Muir in third position. I think that's uh, Brendan Rowett who is in fourth place, number five, just making his way through. Number 28 there is David White on his 490 uh, Michael and just coming towards us is number uh, 232, that's uh, Martin Small from uh, Brentwood. And once again, as you can see, another good field of riders for this over 50s and 60s class race. Number 217 is uh, Peter Maxwell. So at the front of the pack, it's still number 96, Robbie Allen, who, of course, was uh, quite high up in the police force a while back. But uh, since his retirement, uh, Robbie now uh, spends his time enjoying life and riding uh, these old motocross machine so we're looking at uh, number 21 in third position there that's Sean uh, Muir so Sean's made another good start in this race as we look at number 96 Robbie Allen but as you can see the uh, motorcycling uh, talent in the, in the Allen family runs uh, very deep because uh, Robbie here as you can see is still uh, very quick on this 490 Michael, so another good ride here by Robbie Allen. And it's still Paul White, number 516, in second place with uh, Sean Muir, number 21, in uh, third. Number 62, just going through there, is Kevin Robertson from uh, Newcastle. But it's still number 96, Robbie Allen, who's in complete control of this over 50s and 60s class race as uh, there's a battle ensuing for that second, third and fourth positions. I think at number 51, Neil Erdley has now moved up into second position but now passes Robbie Allen for that pole position as we look at uh, Sean Muir just going through on his uh, Honda uh, Red Rocket. So uh, we have a brand new leader at the front. Number 51, Neil Erdley, who's already won a couple of races here in this class over the course 
of the weekend, so Robbie Allen now in second uh, position. Number 522 just uh, going through is Mike Blaine from uh, Dundee. So as the riders make their way through on their last and final lap of this pre-84 over 50s and 60s class race, it's Neil Erdley who is your race leader on the 465 Yamaha. Second is uh, Robbie Allen there, number 96. And it's still Paul White. Uh, oh dearie me, looks like there was a collision there between uh, Robbie Allen and uh, Paul White. Uh, looks like Robbie has come a cropper and he was sitting in a very good second place position. So as our riders take the chequered flag, it's going to be another win for number 51, Neil Erdley. And it's going to be uh, Paul White who crosses the finish line in second uh, position. So there you have it, that uh, almost concludes uh, part three of the race programme from the Sunday here at the Scottish Grand National uh, Scramble at uh, Drumlandig Castle. But of course, please uh, rejoin me here on Classic Dirt Bike TV to see the remaining parts from this fantastic weekend of racing.